But we begin with that human toll of the Russian assault on Ukraine. At least 136 civilians killed, including 13 children and 400 others are injured. Now we also have learned that the Kyiv TV tower has reportedly been hit by a Russian missile. We've got ABC correspondents on the ground throughout the region. Aaron Katursky joining us. Also Phil Lifoff. He's in Poland and James Longman in Moscow. Aaron, let's start with you there in Lviv. That site that was hit in Kyiv, the television site. What more can you tell us? Well, the, the main television antenna in, in the capital city of Kyiv rests near a ravine known as Babiar, which was the site of a Holocaust atrocity, the killing of more than 33,000 Jews and then the others as the Germans moved in. So it has some historical significance not lost on Ukrainians, especially President Zelensky, who tweeted after the attack that the world has said never again for the past 80 years, and, and what for if we're going to let the Russians do this. So it, it's a symbolic target, but also a strategic target as it knocks out potentially some forms of communication around the capital. Pointing out, too, where in 1941, Nazis killed more than 33,000 Jews. Uh, it's just astonishing to see uh, uh, not only the targets, but as you said, the symbol, uh, the, the reason why these areas have been chosen. In addition to the massive convoy also heading to Kyiv, you've been following that. There were these two missile strikes in Kharkiv today. What more do you know about that? Yeah, taken together, these are really worrying signs, Kira, that the, the Russians are prepared to perhaps get more aggressive after some early missteps and an invasion at the outset that does not appear to have gone according to plan. Uh, the, the shelling in Kharkiv targeted a residential area, then it targeted this government administration building. We've seen rescue crews going through that building and then bringing people out on stretchers. There were a number of people killed. This strike happened after curfew had already been lifted, so people were out on the streets when it happened. The Ukrainians said that the Russians have been using cluster munitions in Kharkiv, and that would naturally increase the possibility of civilian casualties that led President Zelensky to, to call Russia a terrorist state. The convoy, though, of all the Russian reinforcements doesn't seem to have gone anywhere. The, the U.S., the British, and other defense officials have been looking at it, and it seems to, to have been kind of where it was. We're told the Russians may be having some more logistical problems with food and fuel. And there are even some reports that Russian troops uh, were sabotaging their own fuel tanks uh, so as to avoid perhaps coming in and joining the fight. Mm -hmm. There's some thought that the U.S. and the British have that, that some of the Russian forces didn't even know they were coming to, to fight in Ukraine until they crossed the border. Instead, they were told they were going to be conducting exercises. It'll be interesting to see what happens with those Russian troops, Aaron, if they actually turn against uh, Vladimir Putin in the coming days. Phil, meanwhile, more than 600,000 people fleeing their country. You've been talking to so many of those refugees. What are they saying? And, and, and give us some personal uh, stories of what you've, you've already seen today. Well, Kira, I'm struck by what Aaron just said, you, the, the logistical nightmare that some of the Russians are having and maybe even sabotaging their own tanks. We're hearing some of those reports like then you're sitting on this side of the border in Poland and you're thinking to yourself, what is all of this misery for? Depending on your situation, each individual refugee is different. So, for instance, we met a woman named Olia. She has two kids, uh, seven and three, and we met her yesterday. Uh, she's over here while uh, she was actually on the steps of Lublin City Hall, where I am. Uh, she, was, she was protesting uh, what was going on in her country, and she was singing the national anthem. Her husband is fighting. She has friends here in Lublin, like a lot of Ukrainians do, and she's staying with them. Uh, there are two million, roughly two million Ukrainians here in Poland. So a lot of the refugees coming across are, are coming to familiar faces, family and friends. But two days ago, we met a family on the border just about an hour and a half from here. I noticed them because they were just standing there. Most people were moving in one direction or another. They were just standing there with their belongings. Uh, the great grandma was in sandals. And they knew nobody. They spoke Ukrainian. They did not speak Polish. Within two hours of them getting across the border, they were on their way an hour north with a group of Polish citizens who had taken them and they were bringing them to a shelter. And tonight, they're sleeping in a warm shelter with warm food and they're together.
Kira. Wow. A bit of good news uh, for sure, Phil. And James, now to you in Russia, where you just heard Aaron talking about these Russians actually sabotaging, sabotaging their own tanks. What, what, it, what are you hearing from there as many of these soldiers questioning their role of why they're even on this mission? Do you see backlash uh, coming and, and possibly Putin's own troops turning against him? Well, that is that is a big one, uh, uh, Kira. I mean, do I see Vladimir Putin changing course on this? It's hard to see, isn't it? I mean, in terms of the troops themselves turning on him, the Russian army is absolutely enormous. It's not uh, quality, it is quantity. And one would imagine, I mean, I've seen the Russian army in action in places like Syria. Um, one would imagine, now let's sort of hypothetically kind of think about this, if his troops did turn against him, he would turn to the air and his own troops would then just be collateral damage. That was what you'd imagine Vladimir Putin would actually do. Everyone here is trying to get into the head of Vladimir Putin. What is he thinking? Does he know that this invasion isn't going that well? And who is talking to him? Who is surrounding him? Well, one of these men is uh, Sergei Shoigu, his defense minister. Now, he is someone who everyone thinks is very close to him. They've, known, they've been known to go on sort of uh, hunting trips together. Um, but this is also a man who comes with a Cold War mentality. And so even if Vladimir Putin is getting advice from anyone, he's likely getting that advice from people who share his worldview, who are just saying to things, saying things to him that he agrees with. And, and let me just you know, pose this hypothetical. Can you imagine anyone like uh, Sergei Shoigu, the defense minister, coming into their boss, Vladimir Putin, into his office and saying, yeah, the, the invasion's not going very well? No. I can't imagine that. What I can imagine is, yes, Mr. President, we're doing everything we can, and then getting, turning to some of the most atrocious uh, tactics imaginable in warfare. That is the most likely outcome of a Russian army which feels like it might be on the back foot. Like I said, we saw what they could do in Syria, we've seen what they did in Chechnya. The only thing that perhaps makes me think, well, that might not happen is because the world is watching in a, in a different way this time round. And uh, there's also been a lot more uh, pressure on the Russians, even than 2014, when the invasion, last invasion of Crimea, he was able to go into Syria with impunity. He was helped by Bashar al-Assad. In every other scenario, the Russians have been able to kind of do what they want in the knowledge that the international community wasn't really united in their criticism. This time round, he is facing a much, much bigger barrage of criticism. The question is whether that will make him back down. Thinking about Vladimir Putin as we know him now, it's hard to see, but you just can't lose hope in this sort of situation. Kira? Yeah. Backing down or just asking the question, how long can he possibly last? James, Aaron, Phil, thank you all so much. Hi, everyone. George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.